It's go time. So, of course, you guys remember this as the M81 e-bike sent to me by AdMotor. Now, this is their cargo e-bike. And in order to test out the cargo feature of it, in the previous video, we hauled two by fours from Home Depot. And the next way I want to test out this cargo feature is by going on a hunt for some pallets. Because who doesn't love pallet furniture? <coughs> Anyways, let's go on the hunt now and see what we find. Get these on. And just like that, we've got two great looking pallets for our rustic project here, brought home thanks to our AdMotor M81 e-bike. Now, honestly, I had no interest in the e-bike before this. This is my favorite toy. This is the coolest damn thing. It is so much fun, and I feel like I'm gonna kill myself every time I ride it. It's terrific. Now, anyways, let's go ahead and break down these pallets into usable boards. I'm gonna start by cutting off the one nail side on either side, and then for the middle section, I'll show you what I do next. So as you can see, when reusing the pallet, as soon as you cut off both those outside edges, you eliminate two thirds of the nails. Now for the center, I'm just gonna knock out this two by four. A bunch of the nails will stay into these slats, but the ones that don't, I have this pneumatic nail remover made by Air Locker. I think this is like 50 bucks on Amazon. This thing's amazing if you're gonna be using pallet wood. You just put it over the nail, squeeze the trigger, and it shoots the nail in reverse out the other side. Oh, let's give it a shot. And looks like every single nail stayed in the boards and not the two by four. So uh, I guess score, I just got a new two by four. So we set up our board with our nails sticking out, put our air locker over top, and it's gone. Perfect. Rinse and repeat. And there's all our freshly harvested rustic looking boards. So with all our pallet wood nice and nail free and being held up rock solid in place by the super extra strong kickstand on this new AdMotor bike, we're gonna go ahead and run it through the thickness planer and clean up those front and back sides. Now we have these really rough edges left over on both edges. Now I'm gonna clean up everything and cut to the same width at the table saw after this, but First, I wanna use one of my hand planes to clean up this rough edge. Now you have here my traditional hand plane, as well as this brand new one sent to me by Tursa Knives. This is the Rally 220N. And I think you guys are really gonna like this. This thing is very interesting. Let's take a closer look at it. So you see my traditional hand plane here, and it has this huge iron right here, which is the blade down at the bottom. And it's a huge chunk of steel that you can pretty much sharpen indefinitely. Now over here, this is the two-handed Rally 220 hand plane. And what's different about it is it doesn't use that huge iron. What it actually has is interchangeable disposable blades. Let me show you one right here. Pull this back, pull this up. And inside here, you can see one of these little blades without cutting myself. Now it has these holes on here, so they're easily indexable. All you do is drop it into place, Close this, lay it flat, lock it into place, and this is your adjustment for depth of cut. It's that simple. I don't know about you guys, but I hate the idea of sharpening tools. As easy as it might be for some people, I just don't like doing it. So this is a perfect setup for me. Now the insane thing about this is there's no messing around. You just drop in the blade and it cuts right away. Like you just saw me do that, let's take a test cut. A little deeper cut. A 
Look at how deep that cut was. I actually set that way too deep. So you guys might be saying to yourself, well, where do you store all the extra blades? I don't want to lose them. Well, it has this nice little hole right here in the handle where you can store your extra blades. Now, this one is actually a carbide tip blade, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be just as fantastic, but with a longer lifespan than these regular steel blades. So that's cool that that's an option too, because you pretty much can't get a carbide blade with your regular old Sheffield plane, can you? Anyways, head over to Tursa Knives right now. There's a link in the description. You can pick up your own Rally 220N hand plane. And let's get back to the project and start planing some wood. The finish it leaves is just gorgeous. This is silky smooth. It's like butter. So now that we have a straight edge from the hand plane and running it through the table saw to get another flat edge and parallel side, we're gonna go ahead and start the glue up because pallets only come in such a big width. So we need to glue them together to make some panels to be cut down once again to their proper size. So all we're gonna do is just Use my little helper here to help glue this up, clamp it overnight, and then we'll start chopping everything up. Yeah, good job. Yeah. <laughs> Say bye. Yeah. Bye. So you see I have marked out a little bit of an angle on this side and this side, and these are just the pieces that are gonna go on top of the box for a little bit of decoration, make them look like a real ammo crate. Now to cut these tapers, I'm just gonna use the bandsaw as I find it the safest way to do it. You can do this with a taper jig on the table saw or whatever way you wanna do it. But after I cut these, it's gonna be rough, so I'll just take them over to the belt sander and good to go. All right, now that everything's cut out, we can begin assembly. Now, first I'm gonna start with the two drawers. These are both identical. And the way we're gonna build these is we just have our fronts, backs, our sides. These are gonna be held in place with some glue and brad nails. I'll come back and add a two inch screw, one in each corner, just for a little bit of strength near the top. Now, as for the bottom, we'll just put a bead of glue around the bottom and then keep that down with a bunch of half inch crown staples. This is an insanely fast and very strong way to build drawers. So our drawers are now fully assembled, super strong. We're gonna go ahead to the main body construction. You see I have my bottom piece, my top piece, and the two sides. The two sides are a little bit short. That's because our front and backs where the drawers slide out are gonna have that side piece nestle in so you don't realize there's a drawer there. It's gonna be a hidden drawer kind of thing. So we'll go ahead and get the bottom and top attached to the sides here. We're just gonna use brad nails, glue, and two inch screws. So the drawers are gonna run on these soft close drawer slides. And you may be wondering yourself, do you need to use soft close? Well, I think so because there's a lot of tension that you need to put on these to pull these out at first. So with the soft close on these slides, it's gonna to wanna to keep the drawers closed as you're biking around. The drawers won't really wanna open on you. We will have some latches, but that's still the theory at least. Anyways, to get these mounted, we'll use a spacer block and we'll line these up flush here. I am gonna to have to take out the inner drawer slide here, just like that, so I can get to this front screw hole here. So we'll use my self-centering drill bit to drill a pilot hole as this is real lumber and not plywood. If this was plywood, I would never bother pre-drilling a hole or drilling a pilot hole. Can't believe I said pre-drill. But yeah, with real wood, you don't want it to split, so we are gonna have to drill a pilot hole first, and then we'll drive in our 5 8 inch screws. 
We'll use just button head screws here and here, but we'll have to use this countersink head in the back as it has a bit of a deeper hole and it's just not gonna work with the regular button head screws. So one, two, three, we'll do that for these four drawer slides. Okay, so if you ignore the fact that I mounted this top set in the wrong direction because this side slides out this way and this side slides out this way, then yeah, everything went really smooth and we're on to mounting the drawers. So we're gonna do that first by placing a little shim underneath where the drawer is gonna go. We're gonna pull out our drawer slides, place the drawer in, and we're just gonna push these back until they're flush with the front and we can see our first mounting hole. So we're gonna drill a hole there, put a screw in, and then we'll pull it out, do the same thing for the two other holes. We can pull our shims out, and you see the drawer is now functional. Now to get to this last screw in the back, we're gonna have to pull the drawer out of the slide assembly. Okay, now we'll flip it around and we'll do the top drawer. The only thing different about this one is I'm gonna have a little bit of a thicker spacer. This one's about a quarter inch between the two drawers. So now we can get the fake drawer fronts installed. This is actually the side of the ammo crate itself, our fake drawer front. And you can see it doesn't quite fit because I cut it to the same eight inches as these sides. So now at the table saw, we'll just cut off about an eighth of an inch. So there's just a little bit of wiggle room. So our drawer front now has a little bit of wiggle room and fits in here nicely. Now the spacer that I'm gonna use is actually the saw right here. I found that's the best thing for centering it height wise. And from left to right, we'll just center it with a little bit of gap there, just by eyeball and feel. Now to keep this in place temporarily, I'm gonna shoot in a couple of brad nails from the front. We'll pull the drawer out, and then we'll attach some pocket screws from the back to keep it in place forever. Simple as that. Let's do the other side. The last pieces of wood to complete the look of the ammo crate is a couple strips here on either side and then a couple braces across the top. All of this will just get glued on and then held in place with some brad nails. Then we're almost done. So this thing's starting to get just a little bit heavy. So in order to help with that, we've got some flip down handles right here that we're gonna mount on either side. So first, let's just stand this up, make it a little easier. And we'll go something like that. So we'll just use our self-centering drill bit, screw them down. And same thing to the other side. So now we have to mitigate against this scenario. You pick it up, you, oh, I tilted it. The drawer fell out. How are we gonna stop this? Well, here's how we're gonna do it. I bought myself these large latches here, obviously a nice army black. But anyways, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the hooks right here so they're out of the way of the drawer, and then the latch can go right on top of it. This will hold the drawers closed when we're biking around, and leaning from left to right, and doing our sweet jumps and whatnot. Now the nice thing about these latches is they're also gonna double as the drawer pulls because I didn't want any visible handle over here because it is, after all, a sneaky ammo crate hidden drawer toolbox. So you can easily put your fingers on here, either side, and pull open the drawers. As well as when you're in movement, it keeps everything nice and tight. So let's get these four installed and see how it works. And there you have it. We have a uh, hidden tool chest ammo crate. Let's see how it works. Drawers aren't opening. Pop these off. Pull. Top shelf, bottom shelf. Good tools, bad tools. Oh.
Now onto mounting the ammo crate onto the bike. And what I'm gonna do is have these runners on either side and they're gonna help lock it into place on the bike rack. So I have a spacer here that's the exact width, the space between these two that we need for the bike rack. And we're simply just gonna place these here and just nail them down. This will give us a positive indexing where it'll just kind of sit right and lock right into place on the back of the rack. And then we'll just put a strap over the top and it'll be as simple as that. That way this thing is easily removable and you can bring it to your job site or whatever you're doing, easy peasy. Let's give this a shot. So there you have it. Our next step is gonna be taking the hardware off and giving this a wicked awesome paint job. Oh, thanks to my laser engraver CNC machine thingy, I was able to cut out the negative image of this army star. So we're just gonna go ahead and spray it with some white chalk paint, and then we'll remove all this and do it to the other side. Well, there's three army stars on it now and I think it's looking pretty damn nice. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the hardware. I'm just adding these little bit of weather gasket along the bottom here. This is where the pipes are gonna interact with the bottom of the box just for a little bit of sound deadening and cushioning. You know, bigger, can't hurt, so why not? Got some extra laying around, let's just put it on. So our toolbox is done, but what good is a toolbox on the back of a bike without any tools? So right here I have my survival's guide, quote unquote, to a bike adventure. We got a radio, a bike pump, flashlight, and the battery to go with all that, hatchet, bike repair kit, all the tools associated, screwdrivers, and of course the charger should we need to charge up the bike anywhere. Now what I have here is this multi-layered foam stuff. A lot of it's called Kaizen foam or shadow foam, stuff like that, but that crap is wicked expensive. So this is actually the foam that came with the bike. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough to do both drawers. So this is just some other random foam that I found. It's black, not the same, but yeah, this is what we're gonna use. And the reason behind this foam is so this stuff doesn't bang around. It's really held in there nice and tight as we're riding around. So let's go ahead, trace this out, cut it out and get our tools into our box. Okay guys, I'm gonna level with you. This thing is far cooler than I thought it was gonna be. So uh, yeah, this is my going on a bike ride toolkit. Let's uh, take it on a bike ride. Oh, what seems to be the problem, mister? My tire's flat. Oh, do you need help fixing it? Yeah. Oh, I've got just the thing for you. A tire inflator. All right, let's pump this up. Squeeze it. Perfect. You're all set, mister. Well, another satisfied customer. On to save more children. Away!